and welcome to the B-League Championship. This is Kawasaki Brave Thunders up against the Nagoya Diamond Dolphins. A lot of other games are going on, but right now everybody is focused on this particular matchup for these two squads. We'll try to make it to the next round. We'd like to welcome you to the Todoroki Arena, the home of the Kawasaki Brave Thunders. Anthony Sutai with the call. Glad you're joining us, but Ray Ray Parks... And the fans in the Philippines looking forward to their squad pulling an upset. But it's going to be really tough. The Kawasaki Brave Thunders actually had a better record at 42 wins, 13 defeats. Up against Nagoya Diamond Dolphins, 34 victories against 15 setbacks. That is what we're looking at, the B-League Championship. And we're focused right now there on the right top right side, which is the game at hand. But a lot of other familiar teams, Ryukyu's there. We also have Alvark Tokyo, Chiba Jets, of course, the defending champions, are in the championship. These are the top eight teams that have made it to the next phase of the competition. But right now, you throw all the stats that you have out the door because it's all about winning this ball game and then after a win here, win one more and you move on to the next round. This is a best of three affair and unlike in other leagues, we're in the home team will have advantage in a best of three scenario. What would usually happen is two games will be with the home team and one will be with the team with the less favorable record. But here in the B League, all three games will be held here if needed at the Todoroki Arena. As we take a look there at number two, one of the main men, of course, for their squad. But when you talk about the Kawasaki Brave Thunders, obviously their main man will be the king, Nick Vazikas. That gentleman there also on your screens. Let's take a look at the lineup of the Nagoya Diamond Dolphins. For the Filipino fans, they're hoping that Ray Ray Parks has a good ball game here. Looking at the players that you say will carry the cudgels for their squad. They've got number four, Cody Clark. They, of course, have number 12, Taito Nakahigashi. And their import, of course, number 43, Scott Etherton. And number 16, a new addition in the middle of the season in OV Soko. And now we're going to have the introduction of the away squad, the visiting squad, the Nagoya Diamond Dolphins. Let's take a look at their starting lineup. They will start out with number one, Ray Ray Parks. They have number two, Takumi Saito. Number eight, Tenketsu Harimoto. Number 12, that's Taito Nakahigashi, who we mentioned earlier. And number 43, who we talked about as well, Scott Etherton. There is coach Sean Dennis. He coached Shiga last season. He's moved over here. And they're looking forward to a great start to the championship round. Here now, all the fanfare for the Kawasaki Brave Thunders. Here we've got the lineup of the Kawasaki Brave Thunders. Hoping to give their fans here at the Todoroki Arena a lot to cheer about.
And as customary here at the Todoroki Arena, they announce the king the last. Let's take a look at the starting lineup here for the Kawasaki Braves Thunders. Starting out with number zero, Yuma Fuji. They've got number 22. As you saw there, the king, Nick Fazikas. Number 23, they've got Matt Janning. Number 27, they have Naoya Kumagai. And number 35, one of the top slam dunkers in the B League, they have Jordan Heath. That is a formidable lineup as we take a look at the officials handling proceedings here. We've got referee Kato, referee Kubo, and referee Sato. Once again, let's take a look at the starting lamps for both these squads. The home team starting out with Fuji, Fazikas, Janning, Kumagai, and Heath. For the visiting Nagoya Diamond Dolphins, they've got Parks, Saito, Harimoto, Nakahigashi, and Etherton. And here we go, just moments away from our very first playoff match as we start our coverage of the championship for the B-League season 2021-2022. As you see there in the banner, Emperor's Cup Titleists. And they'd want to be able to add some more hardware if they possibly can here. But it starts right here, right now, as they face the Nagoya Diamond Dolphins in game number one of their best of three. Heat's gonna win that one. It's gonna go to Yuma Fuji. They go to the king right away. He is their main creator. Hands it off, Jani. Back to Fazikas. Fazikas for the jumper? No. A chance of defense. We're going to hear that all throughout the night here at the Todoroki Arena. Nice look inside. Etherton with a kick out. Open three. Not going to work. Those are the threes that have got to go down here for the visiting Nagoya Diamond Dolphins. Yuma Fuji will try to go all the way, gets away, but overshoots. Park snaps it to himself and they're on the break. Still nothing on the board. Scott Etherton hands it down. A little bit too strong there on that inside incursion. Still no score. A minute gone here. Trying to go inside. Still not going to work. Good look inside from Kumagai. Saito's going to slow it down. Nice swing. Parks open for three. Not going to get it. He to the board. Still nothing on the board for both these squads. Matt Janning. He's got the... Look, a nice pass. No look pass. Kumagai. Coming from the weak side, Janning found him. It's two to nothing. That's a poor pass. Right in the hands of Yuma Fuji. Now they're going to set things up. Fuzika setting that pick. Fuji gets it to Nick. Nick with a fall away. A little bit too strong. Nice rebound there for Scott. Parks in the open court. Pretty good transition defense being shown here by the home squad. Saito, not gonna hit. That falls in the lap of Janning and he'll bring it down himself. They go inside, Heath, quick double team, but he's gonna score nonetheless. It is four to nothing for Kawasaki. Already two and a half minutes gone. Nagoya still to find their first basket. Scott Etherton left open. He can hit that. Not going to happen though. Not at that instance. Janning will wait for the rest of the troops. He'll also wait for the king. No, he won't. He'll take a jumper and miss. Another rebound for Etherton. He's got two. Nice quick move. Harimoto on the outside. The king. 
Playing good defense in the interior. Parks, that's going to rim out. Parks starting 0 for 2 from three-point country. Kuma guy puts up a three. Yes! And very quickly, it is 7 to nothing for the Kawasaki Brave Thunders. We're now at three and a half minutes. And the boys in white have yet to score. A foul is going to be called there on Nima Fuji. Actually, I think that's a good foul. Because you can see Kumagai was out of position. They were going to play 5 on 4 offensively. As you see, Kumagai goes down. Now Kumagai can get back and they can play equal. 5 on 5. Almost a poor pass. Almost intercepted. Here's Parks. Find Scott. Scott's going to lay it up with the left hand. And they're finally on the board. Not to mention the fact that there was a whistle blown. So that's going to be a three-point play opportunity. Nice pocket pass there from Ray Ray Parks. Clearly a foul there from Kumagai. Touch foul, yes, but he did make contact. Checking in for the first time for the visiting squad, Yutaro Suda. Quick change being made here by coach Sean Dennis. That's not allowed. You can actually tip it from the side of the ring, but not from under it. Things looking good so far for one of the youngest coaches in the B-League in Kenji Sato. Only 40 years old. 42 years old to be exact. Kuma guy hits once again. Pretty good start for Kuma guy here in this ball game. Leads back up to four. Nice pass inside to Scott. Scott will deliver. That's gonna cut the lead down to two. Calling out the play. Play number two says Yuma Fuji. Using that pick from Heath. Nick bounce pass, Fuji spinning, falling away. That's gonna be short, but it's gonna get the shooter's roll. And the lead is gonna be back up to six. That's a pretty good individual move, but the pass goes to the wrong player. And here's Yuma Fuji all the way through. Still no timeout gonna be called here by coach Sean Dennis. It's now an eight point lead at 13 to five. Coach Sean Dennis being very patient. Well, sometimes coaches will do that. They'll allow their players to work through their troubles. But you've also got to be careful. Watch this pass here. It's a no look pass and it went to a player of a different uniform. Yuma Fuji now on the board with two points. He also has one assist. Harimoto trying to challenge the king. Almost lost it. And eventually they do. Here's Janning. Janning will try to set it up. Then attack. Fuji in no hurry. Will try to go inside. Swings it out. Kuma guy for three. That rims out. And it looks like Jordan Heath was trying to get that offensive board. Watch it here. Locking arms there with Harimoto. And now a timeout will be called by Sean Dennis. As Harimoto picks up his first personal foul, we'll be back for more action in just a bit.
checking in for the very first time for the Kawasaki Brave Thunders. Is that youngster over there? Jumper from the wing is not going to work. Parks with the board. Parks has helped out in the rebounds. He's got three already. Here's Parks with the attack. Nice swing. Open three for Suda. That rattles out. Falls in the hands off. Scott Etherton. And he's shaking his head saying, I had a pretty good look. And you can see that look of dismay. Pretty good shot there from Suda. Nice spin there from Yuma Fuji. Fazikas to the wing. Kumagai attacks and he's going to get a soft roll there on that one. And the lead is now up to 10. Nine points already here for Kumagai. Parks picks up his dribble. Manato Kikuchi sent in. Let's see if he can add some firepower off the bench. But we're going the other way. And here's more trouble. Rise Shinoyama now is coming in for the Kawasaki Brave Thunders. Shinoyama is a constant as far as the national basketball team of Japan is concerned. And that's a good strategy by coach Kenji Sato he wants a sock coming off the bench and why not send in one of the top players that you have in Japan Fazikas was actually looking to pass it to Jordan Heath the ring had other plans Carino puts up a three that's gonna drop Yosuke Carino with his first basket here tonight Matt Janning that's his specialty. A little bit off to the right that time though. Quickly bring it down is Takumi Saito. Stopping, popping and missing is Ito. Etherton on the outside. He'll take a three. That's not gonna work. Nice tap there though. Just to try to keep it alive from Kikuchi. That's gonna stay here in this end. Another one of those long rebounds, trying to tap it back to a teammate, but Heath was there. Still a seven point lead enjoyed by Kawasaki. Parks almost traveled. Scott with a spin. That's a little bit too strong. Janning, they'll go inside. Jordan Heath, nice look, but he gave it up. Janning for three. That'll be short. Etherton with the rebound and he's off and running trying to lead the break Ito gets around that Scott pick Scott inside will hit that's gonna cut the lead down to five so far a pretty good scoring outing here for Etherton he's got seven Janning gets denied there good defense put up here by the visiting squad they push it forward Parks Will not force that shot. That pass though will go awry. Shinoyama finds Fazikas. Fazikas inside for two. Sean Dennis livid on the sidelines. Begging his team to get back down on defense. Another easy shot here for the boys in red. Parks will attack and he'll get his first two points of the ball game. And now a timeout will be called by Coach Kenji. Pretty good start though so far by his squad, but this lead has been cut down to five. He wants to set things in order.
We're now going to have the first entry here of Pablo Aguilar. A little change being done here by Coach Kenji Sato. The handoff. Now open three. That lands right in the hands. That's a perfect pass. Aguilar for three. He'll come up short. Another rebound here for Scott Etherton. He's got eight boards already. Nice find. Ito will have to bring it out. It was Janning in front of him. Now he'll reset the offense. Under a minute to be played here in the first period. Barks asking it for three. That's a pretty good block. 3.3 seconds remaining. You can take that shot right in front of the face of Pablo Aguilar. That Spaniard will send it right back. Still a five-point lead enjoyed by Kawasaki. That's a poor pass. Shinoyama in the open court. Will stop, pop. A little bit too strong. Aguilar taps it to himself. Open three. No, Fazikas will bring it inside. That's going to be an offensive foul called on Shinoyama. That was clear. He actually didn't need to do that. Look at Nick. Nick was all ready to get his point inside that shaded area. That's going to be the first personal foul on Ryuse. Ito calling for play number one. Says one up. Karina with the curl. Parks trying to make his move. We'll give it up. E2 inside. Nice pass. Find Scott. Scott's having a tremendous first period. He's got nine points, eight boards, and he brings his team to within three. The King trying to make his move. Open three. Janning. That's going to count, and that's going to give them a six point lead, beating the buzzer here to end the first period. That was a nice find for Nick. Give him an assist there and three points to Matt Janning. First quarter's done. It's a six-point lead enjoyed by Kawasaki. We'd like to welcome everybody back here to the Todoroki Arena, the venue for our very first game of the championship round, what they call here in the B-League as the playoffs. And you're watching the Kawasaki Brave Thunders host the Nagoya Diamond Dolphins. By virtue of a better record, all three games will be held here, if needed, at the Todoroki Arena. Brave Thunders enter the second period up by six. Looking at the numbers, they actually have 
Assists. Six apiece. Parks gonna try to go inside. Gets tripped. Shinoyama will stop. Finds Aguilar. We'll go through the numbers a little bit later on. Probably during one of the free throws, Shinoyama hits. First basket there for Shinoyama. And the lead is now back up to nine. Ito still in the ball game in place of their starter, Takumi Saito. Ito is going to hit. Aguilar is going to bring it down himself. Harassed a little bit there by Harimoto. Safely gets it to Fazikas. Janning. That's definitely a size mismatch. Finds Aguilar. Aguilar hits that open three. He had all day to shoot. He's got his first three. Matt Janning's got another assist. In fact, Matt Janning already with three dimes. That's a nice three there for Carino. That's a pretty good answer. A while ago that match, the biggest lead of Kawasaki at 10. And that is going to be a backing violation. Aguilar apologizes. You can't pick up your dribble right past the half court line. Watch it here. That was very close. But you want to give yourself a lot of space, at least a little bit more space than he had there. Takumi Saito will check back in. Starting point guard here of the Nagoya Diamond Dolphins and Sean Dennis really shuffling his players here. Almost two minutes gone here in the second. Arimoto will dribble out of trouble. Nice look there. Etherton was looking for a three point play. Watch it again. Etherton has really taken advantage of those rolls to the basket. First personal foul will be called there on number 11, Keisuke Masuda. Etherton now in double digits. He's got 10 points, 9 rebounds, and 1 assist. He'll make both. Cross court pass. Shinoyama will give it up inside to Nick. Nick is going to lose it though. Saito to the wings. Suda thought about it. Gave it up. Harimoto, no look pass. That's a little bit too high. Suda says, I like the pass. Especially if it is right there in my grill. Not where I have to really reach for it. Jordan Heath going to check back in. Again, now we've got a chance to look at the numbers. Rebounding story, 15 for the Diamond Dolphins. Only 10 for the Brave Thunders. Assists, we're tied at 8. Turnovers, Kawasaki with just 2. Nagoya already with 7. They've got to cut that down, but they're only down by 5 here. Pablo Aguilar will launch a 3, will miss fire. Saito with a handoff. Another handoff. Suda. Harimoto for three. Back rims that one. Pablo Aguilar is going to give it up. Shinoyama. Looking for the mismatch once again inside. They're going to say it's a jump ball. Maeta was trying to get to the basket. He got tied up though by Nakahigashi. Watch it here. 
Maeta looking at the referee saying there was a lot of body contact also. I was, as I was trying to make my way to the basket, referee say play on. Yuma Fuji going to check back in. Shinoyama will take a breather. Three minutes gone here in the second. Not going to work there for Aguilar, but it's going to fall in the hands once again of the Brave Thunders, Masuda. They'll reset the offense. Aguilar with a handoff. Yuma Fuji hits. Leeds going to get back up to eight. Yuma Fuji now with seven points. Not to mention the fact that he has been orchestrating so well for his squad. That tip, it's going to be saved. Goes to Aguilar. He'll push it forward. They've got numbers. If they want it, no look pass. And a foul will be called there. Kikuchi doesn't like it. But when he was trying to make his turn, he did bump it to Heath. Watch it here. There was no way Heath could have jumped up for that for that ball. Twenty nine twenty one is our tally here in the second period. Six twenty one to be played before the halftime break. Little worried look there on the face of Sean Dennis. On the other side, Kenji Sato. Pleased with what he sees. That's going to be a slam there for Jordan Heath as he adds to his tally of slam dunks. Here in the B-League, they do take note of that. Almost a wild attempt once again there. They're going to settle things down. Suda goes to Harimoto. Harimoto jump step. That pass going to the wrong individual. And here an easy slam there for Pablo Aguilar. And a timeout will be called by Sean Dennis. Things are now starting to get out of hand. Kawasaki now up 33-21. to 21. It's now a 12-point deficit faced here by the Nagoya Diamond Dolphins. Actually, coming to this match, they knew that they were going to be hard-pressed to come away with a victory because they're short. There is no Cody Clark on the lineup and no Ovi Soko. So two of their three international imports not available here. That's why it looks like Scott's got to do a little bit more than he's used to. That's also why you can see Kawasaki Brave Thunders just biding their time. They know eventually they're going to wear this team down. That's pretty good defense. That's even better defense there from Kawasaki. A steal by the boys in white and a big block there by Heath in red. Yuma Fuji from downtown. It is now a 15-point advantage. Yuma Fuji now has got 10 points. And the lead is balloon to 15. That's a badly needed basket there. That's going to bring us to our technical timeout of the first half. 4.52 remaining here in the second period. And it's a 13-point advantage enjoyed by the hometown Kawasaki Brave Thunders.
We've got a jam-packed Todo Roque Arena here this Saturday afternoon. And why not? It's day one of the B-League Championship. The playoffs. And the Kawasaki Brave Thunder is looking to move forward into the next round in this best of three affair against the Nagoya Diamond Dolphins. The Diamond Dolphins will be really hard-pressed to come away with a victory here and a win in the series because they are down two imports. No Ovi Soko, no Cody Clark, both out with injuries. As Parks picks up a personal there. They're gonna call a foul on Parks, impeding the progress, they say, of Pablo Aguilar. Aguilar, bounce pass, Yuma Fuji. Look at that extra passing. And Heath, almost knocking down that three. And an offensive foul is gonna be called there. Manato Kikuchi with a bewildered look on his face. Just when they were trying to get into their offense, another miscue. Sean Dennis just asking his players to just play on. There's nothing they can do. Cards are stacked against them. Open three. Not going to work, but Heath with an offensive rebound. Fuji taking his time. Fuji with a jumper. Short on that three. Scott. Now with his ninth rebound. Almost a double-double here in the first half for Etherton. Well, he needs to do that. He needs a monster game just for them to have a chance to win this ball game. They kick it out. Parks feels the pass. Puts up a three. We'll miss everything. Hurried shot, 24 second shot clock violation, and here come the boys in red, looking to add to their tally. Going to the wing. Fuji looked over and said, I was tipped. Fuji puts up another three, short that time. Heath with an offensive board, poor pass, goes to Parks. We're going to stop the action here as Nakahigashi was looking to look for some early offense. <laughs> Masuda will take a bench, a seat in the bench. As number 13, Satoru Maeta comes in. You can see Coach Kenji Sato is just making sure that all the players he has on the floor are ready to go, are fresh. He wants to wear down this Nagoya Diamond Dolphin squad. Ethan's gonna hit. He's got 13 points to go with nine rebounds. Well, that's still within reach. Just an 11 point margin enjoyed by the Kawasaki Brave Thunders. But they've got possession and they've got the king back in harness. The King. Not trying to make his move. Will fall away and hit. He was just so composed. He knew the situation. He knew the shot clock was winding down. And he knocked it down. Karina will miss. Fazikas was trying to get to it. Almost momentarily stolen by Kikuchi. But in the end, it's ball once again for Kawasaki. Two oh nine to be played here in the first half. Nice pitch forward. Aguilar says, let's wait for the king. The king says, let me attack and find the open Kumagai. Kumagai with the floater. Not that time. Another rebound here for Scott. And he's in double figures now. Ten boards. That's a nice basket. 
Coming from the wing, Karino now has two threes. A total of eight points. And a timeout will be called here by coach Kenji Sato. Though their team is still up by 10. Under two minutes to be played here. In the first half, Matt Janney is going to check back in. So that's even more firepower on the floor for Kawasaki. Janning trying to create. Finds the king. The king finds Janning. Couple of jab steps. Then he puts it on the floor. Puts up a hurried three. Trying to beat the shot clock there. Still a 10 point lead enjoyed by Kawasaki. So far, Scott Etherton's done quite well for his squad, being the lone international import. He's got 13 points, 10 boards. Parks is now on the bench. And now sent back in. Pocket pass. They go outside. Open three over shoots. Heath clears. Fuji to the wing, extra pass, Heath, Janning, it ends up with Fuji. Fuji will fall away. Parks looks hurt. He fell heavy on that knee. Well, Parks tried. And he's still down as he picked up his second personal foul. Under a minute to be played here. In the second pair, there's Cody Clark. Sitting behind the bench. We have yet to see O.V. Soko. But still, they're both not available. Park says he's good to go. That's a better angle. And unfortunately for Parks, Heath fell on him. Parks will be replaced. They want him fresh for the second half. They need a second half push. Fuji puts up a three and hits. And the lead's back up to 13. He's got 13 points. Nagoya already in the penalty. Scott with a slam. Janney gets it in bounds, gets it right back. They go to the king. The king right back to Janning. Janney looking for some space. The king. Takes a hurried shot. Almost worked. Scott Etherton's going to come up with what he thought was a block. Officially a foul. Scott Etherton. Coming into the play. It looked like he got all ball up high. 
Referees might be saying he got a lot of body. Eight point three seconds remaining in the first half. Officials just double checking something. Well, Nagoya in the penalty. You like that substitution? Of course, Sean Dennis sending back Ray Ray Parks for the final eight point three seconds. They're going to have the ball offensively. So they want to have even more options on the floor. Heath a little bit too strong on that first free throw. Under eight seconds to be played. They've got to rush things. Extra pass. Harimoto for three. That would have counted. Unfortunately, it didn't drop. And after the first two quarters of play, it's a 12-point advantage taken into the halftime break by the home squad, the Kawasaki Brave Thunders, at 42 to 30.
It's halftime here at the Todoroki Arena and we find the Kawasaki Brave Thunders up by 12, 42 to 30. They got off to a very good start. Actually, the 7 to nothing blast to begin this ball game, led by that man there, Kumagai. He actually had seven points in the first period alone, but coming right back and answering the call was that gentleman right there, Scott Etherton, the lone international import for the Nagoya Diamond Dolphins because unfortunately Cody Clark is out. Ovi Soko, who was a late addition, they needed that firepower. Unfortunately, not in harness here today. Carino answers from the outside. So the locals have really had to step it up. Parks, their Asian Kota import, so far has done decent. He's got two points. He has five rebounds and two dimes. Really having to fill in the huge shoes of Ovi Soko and Cody Clark. Yes, Carino with another one of his threes. First period ended with a six-point advantage for Kawasaki at 20-14. to 14. But a lot of turnovers led to easy baskets such as that one from Pablo Aguilar. One of the few times they've got a turnover, but look at this. Heath comes up and rejects it. Just when it looked like it was an open layup, suddenly it wasn't. Nice three there from Yuma Fuji. Fuji would end up with 13 points and three assists. As we break down the numbers, the numbers are a little bit skewed if you look at it. In terms of two-point field goals, the Diamond Dolphins actually shot better at 60%. But they actually converted less. 9 out of 15 as compared to 10 out of 23 on the other side. But here's the big discrepancy from three-point distance. 7 out of 17 for 41%. For the Brave Thunders, 3 out of 18 for 16% for the Diamond Dolphins. And that's where the big discrepancy lies. Both these teams haven't really gone to their free throws too much. There have not been too many fouls. Five turnovers for the Brave Thunders, 10 already for the Diamond Dolphins. In terms of points in the paint, it's 2016 in favor of the Brave Thunders. Looking at the assist department, it's also 13 to 11 in favor of Kawasaki. And in the steals, it's 7 to 3 also with the Brave Thunders on top with plus 4. As we take a look at Carino, he's shooting 60% from there. They need to find him a little bit more if they want to be able to inch closer to this hometown fans who are dying to get a victory here for their squad. They've been noisy from the get-go, and why not? After leading 7 to nothing, 13 to 5, 15 to 5. Their team has not yet looked back. But still, within striking range are the Nagoya Diamond Dolphins. And obviously, Coach Sean Dennis knows that. As he tells his boys, we've got another 20 minutes of basketball to be played. But let's take a look at Kumagai. This gentleman who stands six foot five. And Pablo Aguilar coming off the bench, hitting a three. There's another three, this time from Yuma Fuji. So they've done so well, shooting 40%, 41 to be exact. 7 out of 17, we showed you those numbers. As we take a look at the leading scorers for the Kawasaki Brave Thunders, they're led by the 13 points of Fuji. Nine points there for Kumagai. Jordan Heath has five. For the trailing team, Scott Etherton's got 15. Carino with 9 on three threes. And Ito has 2 points. Rebounding story. Etherton's got 10. Parks has 5. Heath for Kawasaki has 7. Nick has 4. And Masuda has 3. 
for the home squad, assist department, for each for Ito and Matt Jenning. Also three apiece for Saito, for Nagoya, and three for Yuma Fuji from Kawasaki. There's the aforementioned Saito. There's Scott Etherton. As we begin the second half. Karina's gonna start out this half on the bench. First possession goes to the home team. Check that to the away team. Harimoto was thinking of taking the shot, but that's gonna be an offensive foul called here. Watch it once again. Scott Easterton trying to set the pick. Bang! That's going to be a second personal foul on Scott Easterton. They cannot lose Scott. That was a cheap foul. Fuji finds the king. They look inside, that's too easy. Pablo Aguilar getting the pass. The King with another assist. That's assist number four. Arimoto will challenge. Easy rebound there for Kumagai. Fuji swings it to the King once again. Let's see who's cutting to the basket this time. No one is. Kumagai left open for three. Bang! And just like that, it's a 17-point lead for the Kawasaki Brave Thunders. And Sean Dennis says, enough is enough. Critical moment here for the away squad. They need to be able to stay in step. Parks, his pass deflected. That's going to stay here in this end though. Ray Ray Parks is going to need to have a monster game here. To try to make up for the loss of Ovi Soko and Cody Clark. They're looking for Parks. He swings it. Now Mill attack. A little bit of a stutter step but he's going to miss. Asking for a foul but Scott was there for the putback. They quickly go the other way and then they say they set things up. Heath inside. He got good inside position. Harimoto with the block. But two free throws coming the way here of Jordan Heath. That's a nice seal. There's nothing Kikuchi can really do but foul. Kikuchi's going to pick up his third personal foul. Kikuchi, the 32-year-old, six-foot-four forward. Heath rattles that one through. Leads back up to 16. They want to be able to, talking about Nagoya, they want to be able to make sure that they enter the fourth period with a chance to still win this ball game.
chance of defense. And they get the defensive stop. Kumaga is going to go all the way through. And the lead is now ballooned to 19. 14 points now for Kumagai. It is 51 to 32. Parks will go to Scott. Scott will be fouled. That's going to be the first team foul of Kawasaki here. That might be the second on Kumagai. Saito will take a, bench, a seat in the bench. You can see the depressed looks on their faces. They're doing everything they possibly can, but this Kawasaki team is just stacked. Not to mention the fact that they're stacked and they're at full strength. Harimoto bricks that one. He to the board, gives it to Nick. Nick over to Kumagai. Kumagai stops, pops. Will miss. Rebound there for Etherton. Ito has checked in, kicks it out, open three, Harimoto rings the bell. That cuts the lead down to 16, but you can see in total command, there's Heath, slight bump, forces the issue, and here comes Parks. Parks will score! Parks against three, he says it's not a problem. That lead is down to 14. 7.04 to be played here in the third. Nagoya will not go away. Foul is going to be called there on Saito. Check that on Ito. The backup point guard of Saito. They look like twin brothers. That's going to be his first personal foul. Pass was a little bit too tight. Nonetheless, they get it past the timeline. Let's see where they opt to go. Yuma Fuji will take it himself. He's gonna miss. Nick's there. He's put back a little bit too strong. Scott pushing it. They need to set the pace. Scott's gonna miss. Fuji on the outside, Fazikas. Fazikas will be short. The save goes to the wrong individual, but Parks can control it. Parks asking for a foul. There was some contact. Watch it here. Referee say play on. Well, the playoffs. It's supposed to be physical. The playoffs is supposed to be a notch higher. And it surely is, as you can see here. Aguilar to the corner. Bang! They're hitting from all areas. 16 points now in the contest here for Yuma Fuji. Nice look inside. Scott Ethan is going to get blocked there by Jordan Heath. Kumagai on the run. Kumagai inside. That's not going to drop. They lay it down. Ito with the jumper will hit. One of the few times you've seen a hurried offensive thrust coming from Kawasaki. They get it past the timeline. In the nick of time. Now Fazikas. Matt Janning getting ready to check back in. They need his outside sniping. But Yuma Fuji says, keep him on the bench. I'm on fire. I've got 19 points. Now an 18 point lead here enjoyed. As Parks will be fouled. Uh, 
Karina's gonna check in. They need his outside sniping. Nakahigashi is also back in action. Well, there's Matt Janning as we mentioned earlier. That's gonna spread the floor a little bit more. Carino just checked in, launches and hits. That's his specialty. He's gotta be a marked man. Shooting 60% from three-point country. Nice look inside. Foul's gonna be called there, Nakahigashi. And that's gonna put Nagoya in the penalty with 448 still to be played. We haven't seen too many free throws here. Look at the free throw numbers so far. Kawasaki, three out of four. Diamond Dolphins, three out of three. The King looks inside, bounce pass. Heath with a slam. Nice touch pass. Heath with another slam deck. There's a steal. Heath inside. Harimoto was not able to establish his position inside. And so they're going to say, it's still ball of Kawasaki. Nice steal by Fuji. Look at this perfect pass. Fuji just lays it down. Fuji to the king. The king trying to make his move. Shinoyama actually has really not done too much here today. But his team already with a huge advantage. He should be coming in in the next minute or two. Ito, no look pass. That's going to be a three-point play here. Yuma Fuji tried his very best to, Scott, to stop Scott. But Scott is too powerful. There from another angle, and that'll drop. And Yuma Fuji says, I tried. That's going to be a second personal foul, third team foul for Kawasaki. Etherton, that's going to rattle out. That's going to be a foul on Ito. That's going to mean free throws. That's a poor foul. They actually had Yuma Fuji where they wanted him. In the backcourt against the double team, but there was body contact. He can't believe it. If he takes a look at the replay, he'll see just how hard he bumped into Yuma Fuji. 409 still to be played here in the third. Fuji makes the first free throw. Ups the lead to 16. He's got 20 points. Now 21. Well, the fans at the Todoroki Arena are out for blood. They're still chanting defense. Ito with the jumper, a little bit too strong. Janning picks it up. They're on the break. He'll go to the wings. The king for three. No. Ito trying to get around that pick. We'll put up a jumper and hit. He's got a good percentage from medium range. The king hands it off. Fuji. They go to Janning. Janning with a spin all alone there for two. And Scott Etherton got hit there. And he was screaming in pain. It'll be nice to see exactly what transpired he's, as he's holding on to his ankle. He's the lone international import for Nagoya. 
If he can't play, that's going to be real trouble. Ooh. He saw it there, falling on the foot there of Janning. Twisting that ankle. He looks okay though. But the problem is, that's going to hurt. That's going to hurt much more tomorrow morning. And they've got back-to-back -back games here at the Todoroki Arena. And now that he sits down, there is no import at all for the boys in white. Parks is also on the bench. The locals, we really have to step it up. Poor pass, Janning will finish. Now the cards are really stacked against Coach Sean Dennis. Does he send Parks back in? He has another turnover. The King to the wing. Janning puts up a three. He'll come up short. And there's just nobody that can actually box out and stop Jordan Heath. Not to mention Nick Fazikas was also coming in for the offensive rebound. And so free throws coming up here. You can see Harimoto did his very best, but he picks up his second personal foul. Harimoto is only six foot six. Jordan Heath is six foot ten. We'll be back for more action right after this break. First free throw is going to be short here for Jordan Heath. Second. He made the adjustment. And it's now a 20 point advantage enjoyed by Kawasaki at 66 to 46. As early as now, we'd like to invite you for our coverage tomorrow. At 3 in the afternoon, Manila time. As these two teams face each other once again. Almost a backcourt violation. They swing it over. Nakahigashi to the corner. You can just see the size mismatch here without the international imports and without Ray Ray Parks. Harimoto puts up a jumper. Easy rebound there for Nick. He didn't even have to jump. And now they can try to orchestrate and take advantage of this size mismatch. They send Janning to the corner. Ito. To Fazikas. Fazikas. That's too easy. And the lead is up to 22. This could be an uneventful fourth period. Especially if Scott is not able to come back. Parks is still on the bench. Nice incursion there from Nakahigashi. They're trying to rush things. Not quite sure why they are trying to do that. Everything is in their favor at this particular point. Coach Genji reminding Maeta, we've got the size mismatch. Let's take our time. Let's let our big guys get into position. There's Janning. 
Look at that. Tip in. That's from Mayeta. Saying, I made up for my earlier miscue. Nakahigashi will attack. And a foul will be called there on Pablo Aguilar. Nakahigashi not scared to attack the big boys. It was actually a foul much, much earlier. First personal foul going to be called on Pablo Aguilar. A member of the Spanish national squad. Nakahigashi and Nagoya will need all these free throws. He misses the first. To the delight of the fans at the Todoroki Arena. As they wanted to miss another one. And he does! Another easy rebound there for Nick. That's rebound number eight. His last two rebounds have been like taking candy from a baby. Here's Fuji. Extra pass, open three. Maeta can't get it, but there's the king once again. Just flips it up and through. 72-48 is our tally. 72-46. Check that, 48. It's now 24. Saito finds Carino. Carino will miss. That's not a very good foul. I'm not quite sure Nagoya realizes during the penalty. They've just got to go down and play tough D. And now there's going to be a quiet walk here for Pablo Aguilar to get to the free throw line and hit two shots. Second personal foul on Nakahigashi. Aguilar's first. Not a problem. Kawasaki also in the penalty already, so they've got no more fouls to give on his last defensive assignment that they have. Lead is now at 25, could be 26. Stays at 25. Now a difference of three seconds from the game clock and the shot clock. That floater is going to work there. They're trying to push. Can Aguilar score? No, he won't. Janning is going to miss on that putback as well. So the final say of the third period will belong to Nagoya. But in the end, heading to the fourth period, they're down by 23.
Good evening, and we'd like to welcome you back to the Todoroki Arena as we have game number one between the Kawasaki Brave Thunders and the Nagoya Diamond Dolphins. This is the championship round, the playoffs. And as we end into the final period here tonight, it's a 25-point lead enjoyed by Kawasaki. Not a good foul there. Coming from Suda. You don't want to get into the penalty early. Well, you want to send the message that you're not giving up. Yes. But you've got to be prudent as well. Floater's not going to work. Suda will push it forward. They'll not attack Janning. Fazikas has hit the bench. That's a nice basket there from Nakahigashi. Check that. That's from Suda. That's going to cut the lead down to 20. That's going to be the second team foul. And not even 40 seconds in. As we said, the message is clear. Suda and the rest of the Nagoya Diamond Dolphins are going to fight till the very end. I think they want to send a message because they're playing game two tomorrow. Aguilar with the left hand will come up short. Offensive rebound. They're going to reset things. Nice bounce pass and that's just too easy. Scoring there is the youngster. Keisuko Masuda, 23 year old. We have not yet seen Ryosei Shinoyama back here in the second half. Of course you didn't need him. I guess they want to preserve him for bigger games ahead. This an impending victory here for Kawasaki. Arimoto inside. He'll be fouled there by Hasegawa. Clipped in there on the arm. Hasegawa's going to pick up his first personal foul. And here's Shinoyama. We were looking for him. Didn't expect him back in the ball game. Fuji will be replaced. It looks like they want to give Shinoyama some burn. They want to be able to make sure that he's in rhythm for tomorrow's game. Haremoto has done quite well here tonight. Unfortunately, it's going to be in a loss. He's got four points, two rebounds, one assist in 24 minutes of action. Nice rebound there from Masuda. That's going to be another personal foul. What are they thinking? They've got three early fouls already. Checking in now is number 60, Sakamoto. That's Sega Sakamoto. One of their young stars who's actually still in college. He's what they call a special designated player. And here in the B-League, you can actually get players that are still in college. And Janning hits from the outside. Lead is back up to 24. He's got 10 points. They wanted to heat up, not just here for tonight, but definitely for tomorrow's ball game. Miss there, Aguilar picks it up. They're trying to attack inside. That layup will not drop. Nice incursion though by Masuda and a foul is going to be called there on Hasegawa. Just too many fouls here. It's essentially a one ball game and it's going to be an unsportsmanlike foul. You don't need to do that. Everything's on your side. The momentum's all on your end. That was actually a take foul more than anything else. Let's see if it's downgraded or it's kept as an unsportsmanlike foul. Remember, under FIBA rules, you need to be able 
to get to the ball, or at least try to make an effort to get to the ball. Boy, our officials are being very diligent here. Others will just let this get through. It's a one ball game. Kenji Sato, very pleased with what he sees. What he has seen so far here. And the fans now silent as they wait to see what the final verdict is. But we might not see Nick back in. We might not see Jordan Heath in the ball game. And they're still checking the monitor. And they're going to call it just a regular foul. So it was downgraded. He was trying to make an effort, as you can see. He didn't make contact with the basketball, though. But he was actually lunging forward, looking for the ball, and not backwards, just trying to stop the player. Another one of the youngsters coming into play. Satoru Maeta. 24 years old, standing six foot two. And now essentially, the benches have been cleared. Well, the bench has been cleared here for the boys in white. Nice put back there. They're still pushing. That's Kikuchi. Janning will just hold on to this one. It's Janning. Still with Pablo Aguilar inside. Janning puts up a three. Yes! That rattles through. And the lead is back up to 25. 13 points now in the ball game here for Matt Janning. Saito looking for space. Almost lost it. Saito with the floater, yes! That was really sky high. One of the highlights here, as far as Nagoya is concerned, the problem is they're down by a bundle. Watch it once again. Off almost the top of the board. So it doesn't seem like Scott Etherton will be back. Doesn't seem like... Ray Ray Parks will be fielded back in by coach Sean Dennis. He wants it to be extra fresh for tomorrow. Shinyama asking for it. Eventually gets it. They go inside to Aguilar. Open three. Janning. Back rims that one. Aguilar with an offensive rebound. No look pass. Janning puts it down. That was a little bit too cheeky. And a foul is going to be called once again here. These two teams might not realize the fact that this game is over. Nice no-look pass. Janning should have just gone up and taken that one. Nice look there at Ryusei Shinoyama. Japanese star. Kikuchi puts up a three and hits. That's going to cut the lead down to 20. Well, mathematically, still possible. Shinayama. Now they're going to go four corners once again. Poor pass. But it ends up with Shinayama. Any issues out of pinpoint pass. And Masuda scores once again. He's got four points, five rebounds, and one assist. Long three is going to drop. Nine points in the contest now for Takumi Saito. Albit in a losing effort. Court pass finds Shinoyama. Will he try to challenge? No, he won't. A couple of jab steps. That's going to drop. And that's going to bring us to our technical timeout here in the fourth period.
Starting to heat up is Satoru Maeta. He's got the last four points for his squad in a one ball game. It's a 21 point lead enjoyed by Kawasaki at 85 to 64. Four thirty-five remaining here in this contest in a one ball game here. Game number one of this best of three. Shinoyama pushes it forward. Shinoyama left open for three. Will come up short. Aguilar misses on that put back. Here comes Suda. And a foul is going to be called there on Shinoyama. I know you don't want to give up the layups, but at this particular point, you want to just head on back to the locker room and get ready for game number two. 4-14 left in this one. It's a one ball game. A 21 point advantage enjoyed. And look at this, Kawasaki in the penalty now. Asuda makes the first. Cuts the lead down to 20. Makes a second as well. Leads down to 19. Janning puts it down. That's going to drop there for Masuda. He's got six points here in the fourth period. A total of eight. Getting away, but not getting that down. They push it forward. Janning. To the wing. Three pointers in. Nice basket there for Satoru Maeta. So Masuda and Maeta owning the last couple of minutes here in the fourth period. And the lead is back up to 24. Suda. Goes to the wing. Open three is going to drop there for Nakasukta. Ninety to sixty-nine is our tally as we approach the three-minute mark. Shinyama calling out instructions. They're trying to go down deep. Nice find in the wing. Back-to-back -back threes, no, but they've got an offensive rebound and a brand new fourteen to burn. That's not the best of shots. Not in the heart of the defense. You're going to get denied every single time. Kikuchi with a block there. Now they empty the benches. Coming in is Kamata. Also coming in is Yosuke Tsunai. So a 31-year-old off the bench, standing six foot six in Kamata, and a six foot one point guard, 25 years old in Tsunai. And the 
fans still want defense. Suda's gonna get away. Ninety-two seventy-one is our official tally. And Coach Kenji Sato knows it's a one ball game. That's why he has rested Janning. He has rested Pablo Aguilar. He needs them at their very best tomorrow. Well, the big question here for tomorrow's game number two for Nagoya. As that drops there for Mayeta. What's going to happen to Scott Etherton? He had a monster ball game here today. But unfortunately for him, he stepped on the foot of Matt Janning here in the fourth period. Had to be replaced. That's going to compound their woes because they don't have Ovi Soko and they don't have Cody Clark. So they might have a lone import in Ray Ray Parks tomorrow. Suda will miss everything. A minute 39 to go. There's Takumi Saito. He's going to need a monster effort tomorrow to be able to just tie this series at one apiece tomorrow. Game time is at 3 in the afternoon, Manila time. And a foul is going to be called there. Two free throws coming the way of Kawasaki once again. Nice incursion from Masuda. Masuda now with six points, six rebounds and one assist. Maeta's got ten points, one board. There's Yuma Fuji. His job's done. Shinoyama's actually still on the floor. Not quite sure you want to risk that. If he gets injured, you have, you're actually your best local player out. But it's a gamble being taken here by Coach Kenji Sato. Just using the shot clock. Three's not gonna drop there for Yota Kobayashi. They might just take a 24 second shot clock violation here or will they go for it? Well, these are youngsters. They want to get on the board. Shinoyama, that's a kick ball. Kick there by Sakamoto. Under a minute to be played, there's Kumagai, one of the heroes here. Job well done for him. Got a brand new 14 once again. Oh, these youngsters want to get on the board. A block is going to be called and we're going to have free throws coming up here. As we have number 20. Yusuke Tsunai heading to the line. Tsunai's got two assists. He wants to score, that's for sure. 49.1 remaining in this one. This is game number one of this best of three series. It's Kawasaki up against Nagoya. Today is the start of the championship season. The second part of the B-League season for 2021-2022. Missed free throw there. And the fans still chanting defense here. Suda, long three. Nope. Difference of three seconds from the game clock and the shot clock. And it looks like Kawasaki will take the 24 second shot clock violation here. That seems to be the instruction. And then they make their move. They put up a three. No. Suda, they might still try to score. He puts it up. That's going to be a miss. And that will be the final score. 97 71. As the Kawasaki Brave Thunders take game number one here by a whopping 26 points. That's actually the biggest lead of the ball game.
Kumagai started his squad off on the right note as we take a look at the quarter scoring. And the squad of Kawasaki won every single quarter, which is, of course, expected. Nagoya, really hard-pressed to come away with a victory without two of their main men in Cody Clark and Ovi Soko. And you can see there on the floor, no Scott Etherton. So they're working on him already in the locker room. Boy, that's going to hurt. Especially if he's not able to come back tomorrow. And again, we'd like to invite you for game number two between these two squads, Kawasaki and Nagoya. Go right back at it tomorrow here at the Todoroki Arena at 3 in the afternoon. And we're going to hear from the home squad. As they get seated and they get ready to address their crowd here. Big win for them as they start off their campaign towards a title run. They are the reigning Emperor's Cup champions and they'd like to be able to add another piece of silverware here this year. Can they get it? We'll find out. Join us for game number two tomorrow. We're going to hear from Coach Kenji Sato and we're also going to hear from possibly some of the main men, the heroes here for Kawasaki. We're just setting things up. Kumagai definitely should be given serious consideration for MVP of the match. Matt Janning lit it up from the outside. Well, he's there for just one thing, to spread the floor. And he gave them that. Once again, quarter scores. As we take a look at the leading scorers for the winning squad, 21 points contributed by Yuma Fuji, 14 for Kumagai, and 13 for Matt Janning. In a losing effort, Scott Etherton with 19 points, Karina with 12, and Takumi Saito with 9. And here is coach Kenji Sato. チャンピオンシップの名古屋は、ま、川崎に似たチームと言われています。ま、得点力もそうですし、アシストもそうですしね。どのように迎え撃ちましたか。もうとにかく今までやってきたことも全部出し切りましょうということで。ま、いい試合の中でいい時間帯
And they continue to go all the way. And that's why they got this victory here in game number one. And there you could hear it. He says, Arigato gozaimashita. Thank you very much once again to everybody here at the Todoroki Arena as they take game number one, 97 to 71. Now let's see if we can hear from some of the players, some of the heroes here in today's ball game. ありがとうございました。今日は特に印象に残ったのが第3クオーターの活躍でした。藤井選手のスタッツを振り返りますと21得点を挙げました。うち5本のスリーポイント、さらにはアシストが7本。このスタッツを見てご自身でいかがですか。いや、本当にあ